Hello friends, this is Neeraj Shukla here, your host and host, your mentor and today we are going to talk about the ISO 7547. Yes, you have heard it right. This is also one of the module in my mega course for oil and gas HVAC. Now you all must be wondering that why I have chosen this particular standard and what is so special about this standard that sir is talking about it and what is it all about. Yes, since I have selected this particular standard for this particular course, it has a very, very, very strong significance. And let me tell you, unless you understand this standard, you really cannot proceed with your HVAC design. Yes, you are right. And what is the standard all about? This standard talks about the HVAC system, that is heating, ventilation, air conditioning system design basis for the marine, marine uh, installations. When I say marine, it's all about the ships. I have already explained in my previous model the types of ships and what is a ship and what category it comes in. All categories are ship, whatever the ship may be, falls under this particular standard. ISO 7547. With any interview you go, you should keep this in your mind. ISO 7547. This is your Bible when you are designing any ship air conditioning and when I say ship air conditioning you know what I mean ship air conditioning is ship air conditioning so we have to we are going today provision of each and every provision of ISO 7547 what it means how many air changes it recommends what temperature it recommends why it recommends what are the other things need to be considered what are the ventilation rate to be considered? We need to consider everything as per this 7547. Remember. So, but don't worry. I am going to explain you each and every provision one by one. And one more thing, when you are going to do this case study, definitely this will help you. All the standard rates you need to mug up completely. So, you know uh, which, which value to be used where. For the offshore installation, oil and gas installation, you have another standard as ISO 15138. That is for the fixed installations. As you know, these marine installations are applicable for the oil and gas also, where there are the ships which are the oil tankers or ships which are the FPSO, that is floating production, uh, floating production and offloading vessels, that is FPSO vessels. So FPSO vessels also have an accommodation for that this standard is applicable. And wherever there are fixed oil and gas platforms are there, where you have a technical building or you have LQ or both in that place you have to apply ISO 15138 but that is we are going to cover in another module that is going to be a mega mega module but this module also you need to understand very very uh, patiently and you need to analyze by yourself you need to take a note of it and uh, notes will help you to be honest so be prepared with your notes so uh, when you apply it, you will understand where to apply and why not, not to apply. So with that, we are going to go uh, to our the next one. This particular slide, we are dis going to discuss about the HVAC calculation basis. Uh, to begin with, what it can say, contains, what it not contains. So you should uh, read it very, very carefully. Whatever is written here is very, very important. It, in short, defines the scope of this standard. You know in which cases it is applicable and which cases it is not applicable. So let's go one by one here. Uh, as this name suggests the standard ISO 7547 is ships and marine technology, air conditioning and ventilation of accommodation spaces, design conditions and basis of calculation. Here you need to remember that when I say this applicable to the ships first of all, this standard is not applicable for the offshore structure with oil and gas structure that is a separate standard which we are going to check afterwards in the next or subsequent models but when we talk about this standard this is applicable to the ships and not only to the ships the accommodation part of the ship where people are going to stay the captain is going to stay the cabin crew is going to stay those particular accommodation which is on the ship those people who are taking care of the ship those people who are running the ship, those people, entire crew, what we say, which is on the ship, where they stay, that particular part, air conditioning only, this standard talks about. 
it specifies the design conditions and the calculation methods for various marine species it talks about design conditions the temperature to be considered in the room all those things that calculation how to do the calculations the u factor how to calculate all these things this particular standard talks about for the marine spaces for the ships that also for the accommodation part second applicable except for the extremely hot or extremely cold climate as stated in various sections subsequent to this standard when we say extremely hot or extremely cold what does it mean extremely hot means anything more than 35 degrees celsius ambient this standard considers as an extremely hot and anything less than minus 20 degrees celsius this standard considered as extremely cold then this is an iso standard which is worldwide recognized no other standard in marine industry or anywhere even ashray defines the design conditions or calculation or criteria for the marine species so this is a only only standard which we need to follow for calculation of the marine species for the ships then it talks about is limited to the specifying design basis for accuracy calculations for the marine sector this means that the scope of standard this particular standard we it doesn't go beyond the calculation methods it doesn't talk about the safety and other issues and the health and safety and quality issue no it talks about only and only about the design calculation methods for the various marine species so one should not get confused over here last is statutory and local requirement always prevails it means that whatever the statutory requirement if they are suppose the ship is flagged for the panama registration or whichever registration it has to follow whatever the local local regulations are there those comes first and then the iso comes later but i'm sure no other local is having specifying any stand over here so this is just for the safety reason they have mentioned this statement so in short you need to follow the standard for the ships while we are designing for the air conditioning of the marine spaces of the ship clear let's move to the next one this particular slide talks about the annex shells to iso 7547 this particular standard has several annex shells that is a b c d e built in in this particular standard earlier each of the annex shells was having its separate standard but now they have combined it into the one standard as an they have mentioned it as an annex shell for example annex shell a b c talks about different aspects of the design so let's take one by one what annex shell a contains and i am going to cover it in the subsequent of uh, subsequent lectures itself what is annex shell a b c in detailed way annex shell a talks about and provides guidance and details of good practices in design of ventilation and air conditioning systems in the ship that i am going to cover it then annex shell b it covers and it gives a thermal conductivities of commonly used construction material in marine then uh, annex shell c it's applies to the special con special consideration in machinery control rooms annex shell d talks about document special requirement of the wheel house wheel house is a place where the captain is shipping and controlling the ships so what is the hvac requirement for that and uh, what are the considerations we need to do that everything is covered in annex shell d then annex shell e talks about the special considerations for the dry provision stores dry provision store or dry provision rooms are the rooms where you are going to keep your dry foods like you know pickles and the places where you don't anything which doesn't need refrigeration a normal air conditioning can work those are all the things uh, or wheat or something you know wheat don't have to keep the wheat boxes mm, somewhere in the refrigeration nobody keeps or rice so these are the places which are kept in the dry provision store so so very important so the air conditioning requirement for that also is considered as a part of this particular annexure e so this is what the annexure it covers and we are going to see it one by one let's move to the next slide uh, 
Uh, these are the typical GA layouts of the marine structure. You know, I'm going to definitely, it's only a rough to give an idea. And when we do this case study uh, thing, then definitely you will have a broader idea in broader sense how it works. So this is just to give an idea that uh, the rooms and how it looks and what the what does the cabin means, what does this uh, mess room means, so what are the various areas it contains. So anyway, in subsequent lectures, I'm going to cover it, which are the major areas in the marine sector. So you will have some idea about it. So the accommodation is very, very interesting one. So let's move on to the next slide in a short while. When we talk about the marine sector, there are certain terms which keep on repeating itself again and again and again. So we should know the definition of this particular uh, terms. So understand it in a better way. So someone says, you know, what is trap provision, what is wheel house and machine control room. So you all should be aware of it. What is accommodation? When we say accommodation in the building sector, the meaning is different. But when we talk about uh, the marine sector, the accommodation means spaces used as a public room, cabins, office, hospital, cinema, games, hobby rooms, hairdressing saloon, pantries, without cooking appliances. This is called an accommodation. Yes, in marine accommodations, these all things you may find. You may find a small cinema hall. You may find the games and hobby rooms over there and offices and some small hospital. Hospital is not a big hospital. Some small hospital, small, we call it the medic room. So small medic room you will find over there. So yeah, the life you may find it's very luxurious life and all, but you need to understand that kind of stress in which they have to live in the middle of the ocean. If you see nobody is there outside the window, only sea and no people you cannot say. Sometimes you call it, is it sometimes it causes depression. People may fall into the depression. So to move out the depression, they make these all facilities available to them. And uh, you might be saying that you no know, food which is served at the marine guys you know, their five star food is there. If you see uh, the lunch is there, it's a platter of lunch, everyday buffet is there. But you need to understand that the kind of food they are getting, the kind of the fruits are what they are getting, that is refrigerated fruits for more than three to six months. Because the ship has to see, sail in the sea, so that food has to be preserved. So that is not a fresh food what they are getting. It's a frozen food which gets thawed and it is being served to them. So it is all about, it's all about sacrifices they also make. So let's come to the next one. It's a machinery control room. It's a space containing the system of main alarm displays and controls for the proportional machinery. There's a proportional and thruster system by which which rotates and ship moves forward or turns left, right or whatever. So for these thrusters, we need some control panels or control systems and electrical panels are kept in one particular room. That is nothing but a machinery control room. Wheelhouse is an enclosed area of bridge excluding radio cabin. That is the, this is the bridge means at the topmost level is called as a bridge. So don't get confused with the normal bridge. Bridge is the topmost level of the marine structure. And last but not the least is the dry provision store. As I already explained in my previous slide, what is dry provision store? It's an enclosed compartment provided with lighting and ventilation for storage of provisions for ship's crew. That is dry provisions. It's not a wet provision or it is not the refrigerated provision. It's a different topic altogether, refrigerated provision. So here you need to understand what is dry provision store, which I already explained. It's called as a pickle or rice or wheat. It is kept in this particular room. Okay. So let's move on to the next slide. In this particular slide, we are going to talk about the outdoor design conditions. Section 4.2 and section 4.3 of this standard define about the summer temperatures and humidities and winter temperatures uh, for, for the ships. As you know that ship moves from one location to another location, we cannot take a particular temperature. But suppose ship is constantly moving only to the cold sector like marine and the North Sea or suppose it has to operate in the Middle East only, then these conditions we cannot consider. But rest all other region, we can state this condition as mentioned in the ISO 7547. And if the ship is moving in the North Sea or in the Gulf region, then we can take the respective temperatures of those regions and we can start the design based on that. So 
section uh, this section says like this the summer temperature and humidity are as follows the outdoor ambient condition for the summer plus 35 degrees and 70 percent are you need to take then uh, indoor room condition 27 degrees celsius and 50 percent are you need to maintain then uh, engine room uh, condition that is engines where the uh, it is separate engine room is there where our engines are kept and it uh, the one of the shaft goes to the propulsion and it moves the propulsion uh, so this is what very important aspect and uh, when we say 45 degrees celsius and uh, there is no control of relative humidity now the question may come that why 45 degrees celsius when ambient is 35 how come 45 because we need to mention that this 10 degree delta t may occur due to the heat dissipated by the engine itself so this is what uh, the 45 degrees celsius comes from so anyway engine room will be hotter always than the subsequent rooms and yes uh, in this particular course i'm also going to teach you how to calculate the airflow for the engine room these big engine rooms so this is very interesting interesting chapter that going to be because i'm going to show the calculation sheet properly one by one that i'm going to share you the soft copy also so you can do by your own whenever uh, you will uh, be given opportunity to by your client to do the calculation you are aware of it so for winter temperatures outdoor air conditions minus 20 degrees celsius and indoor conditions plus 20 degrees celsius you need to maintain as i mentioned in the note earlier all temperatures selected are the dry bulb temperatures uh, and because no wet bulb because already if you see for the summer conditions 70 percent rh is there and for the winter there is no relevance of uh, relative humidity over here all temperatures are stated as for the dry bulb temperatures above temperatures are not applicable for the extreme weather conditions so this clearly defines it and by this uh, you might be uh, understanding that heaters are eminent in this case so we need to design the heaters accordingly because we need to keep minus 20 degrees and plus 30, 22 degrees celsius of course we need to have a heater or if you don't if your client has given you the data box this is what the data you have to use for ambient condition and winter condition well and good but if you don't have any data this is what you need to take and start to design because when any queries come then you have your backup ready that okay on what basis you have calculated boss i have calculated on basis of this particular standard so you are safe because i have already explained in my previous previous modules uh, in this course that insurance is very important suppose something happens to ship and it gets drawn and all your documents get checked and they release insurance if all your design is perfect and approved and it has some basis so you have a basis your company is safe if your company doesn't have to buy any indemnity bond or any uh, losses you don't have company have to don't suffer so tell the things you tell this thing to your boss also that this is the importance of this standard now here the game begins from section this onwards outdoor airflow ventilation quantity yes now section 4.4 talks about the outdoor airflow that is nothing but a minimum quantity of outdoor air shall not be less than 40 percent of the total air supplied to the space is concerned that means whichever calculation you are doing to calculate the outdoor air requirement has to be minimum 40 percent of your sub total supply air okay so this is an interesting uh, uh, clause you need to consider by calculating, calculating the ship marine air conditioning system and it has written as a shall not be less down it is not written that may not be less down may be no clearly stated shall not be less than 40 percent so end of the story okay so let's go to the next important section section 6.2 there are other sections like section 4.3 4.10 blah 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 but those these are those are not relevant or it is not explaining the things which is really you need to know it's only nonsense theory so focus on i've selected only those sections which really matter for the calculation purpose so next move to the next session that is a uh, section 6.2 supply airflow the supply airflow to each air conditioned space shall be calculated using whichever is the following criteria gives the highest value now let's see what ABC is. First is dehumidified supply flow in summer, then dehumidified supply flow in winter, 
and outdoor supply airflow not less than 0.008 meter cube per person of which the space is designed the air exhaust to the private sanitary rooms bath shower or uh, wc shall be at least 10% higher than the air supply to the sanitary room now let's take what is 6.2 talks about it talks about when you supply the air it should be either dehumidified supply in the summer value winter value or each person wise always mention based on my experience i am saying that value which is mentioned in first will be always highest because in winter there is very less sensible load and plus less summer load so this value cannot be higher in winter and plus in in in, in uh, outdoor air supply maximum 100 if you take 0.8008 comes to around uh, 30 cmh per person uh, so 30 cmh even if you put 100 it becomes 3000 cmh at any given point of time for such a big uh, people on board and such installation needed accommodation load will be always higher and dehumidified same frame in summer will be always higher so without any worry you can go for, go for the uh, criteria a over here the second bullet point talks about the 10 percent higher airflow than the supply the reason is that sanitary you know the smell is there so smell should not transform into the accommodation so that it is saying that exhaust should be 10 percent higher than the supply that makes sense because uh, you are creating some kind of a negative pressure so uh, the all the smell will go out uh, from the exhaust and uh, the note is there for crowded areas such as the mess room and changing room the outdoor air supply uh, should be uh, there's a value stated over here that value uh, we have to meet meter cube per person and let's go to the next slide in this particular uh, chapter we are going to talk about the air supply for the ventilation section 6.2 applies over here that is air supply for the ventilation it talks about the supply air supply uh, supply of conditioned air to the ventilated spaces such as those listed below shall be provided directly or by transfer of less vitiated air from an adjacent space and it shall be sufficient to uh, permit the exhaust airflow required to be made that means uh, what it says that you know exhaust air to this particular area can be taken from the adjacent spaces or by the exhaust fan that is uh, primary sanitary rooms it includes bath shower urinal and wc and laundry changing rooms and cleaning lockers in other words it says that you don't have to uh, directly take the air from this particular room but whereas when you take out the room the the air transfer from the other rooms also you can consider so this is what it all about talks so let's go to the next session over here uh, this particular slide talks about the temperature of supply airflow let's go section 6.1 it talks about it's a volume of space what it says as the volume of furniture wardrobe stationary equipment etc shall not be deducted in calculating the gross volume of cabins and other spaces so as you know when we calculate the ventilation air there are certain air changes we need to consider so when we need to consider the air changes we need to calculate the volume of the room also and when we calculate the volume of the room there is some always an argument that should we deduct the volume of the chair should we deduct the volume of the furniture should we deduct the volume of the bed and arrive at the airflow no it cannot be done it is strictly mentioned in section 6.1 that you cannot deduct the volume of these stationary items so you need to consider volume of a room as if it's an empty room so section 6.3 here what talks about it's the temperature of supply airflow the temperature of air supplied to the space shall not be more than 10 degrees celsius lower than the average temperature nor the heating mode more than 15 degrees celsius higher than the average temperature of the space this means suppose your room condition or room temperature is 24 degrees celsius or say let's say 27 degrees celsius then the difference between the supplier temperature should not be greater than 27 or 24 minus 10 let us say an example of 24 degrees celsius your indoor condition so 24 minus 10 
is equal to 14 degrees Celsius. So the supply temperature should not be more than 14 degrees Celsius. And suppose uh, in the heating mode, it should not be uh, more than, say example, 24 plus uh, 39 degrees Celsius, 24 plus 15. So this is what it talks about. So hope this section is clear. They have given what is the supply temperature should be in winter as well as summer conditions. And the volume uh, criteria also, they have made it very, very clear over here. This particular session talks about the exhaust airflow for the marine accommodation spaces. The section 6.4 talks about the exhaust airflow and these are the various areas which are listed which forms a part of a marine accommodation. Say for there are rooms like you know let's take a first one that is saloon, mess room, dining room, common day rooms. Sorry. So the exhaust airflow from these rooms shall be same as supply airflow. And second one is your hospital, that is medic room, pantries and smoking rooms has to be at least 20% more than the supply airflow. The exhaust airflow should be 20% more than the supply airflow. And private sanitary rooms includes the bathroom, shower, the rate is 0 0.02 meter cube per second or minimum 10 air changes per hour, whichever is higher. Then fourth is common Sanitary rooms, it includes common means it is not a private one. That's It's not for only two people. It's for many people. They are using a sanitary rooms. For the common sanitary rooms, these sanitary rooms are near to the mess rooms where many people are eating and they just want to wash their hands or go for the shower or urinals or WC. For these are called as the um, common sanitary rooms. And for common sanitary rooms, laundries, drying rooms, iron rooms, minimum 15 year changes per hour. Then you have changing room, janitor and cleaning lockers has to be exhaust airflow, minimum 10 year changes per hour. Then you need to have the public sanitary rooms in passenger ships also, uh, 15 year changes or the rate which is already given in the table. So you need to clearly understand while calculating the exhaust airflow. This is very very important table. So you need to understand while cal calculating the values of uh, the exhaust airflow. So just mug up this table carefully before going to interview which how many air changes for which areas. So this is going to certainly help you. Remember this is a part of ISO 7547. So take it very seriously and this has been commonly and frequently asked in the interview. So you should know it very, very perfectly. So mark it up properly. Now let's go to the next session. Next. Now this particular slide is again the exhaust system. The section 6.4.2 exhaust system states that the exhaust system from the space listed below shall be directly fed uh, to an open air and not used for the recirculation. Additionally, the exhaust air system for each of these spaces or group of the space shall be separate from each other. It says that suppose you are taking the exhaust from these spaces, it should be an independent exhaust. That means an exhaust fan should not be connected to any of these spaces except that those spaces. And what does it mean is I will just explain you. And one more thing is that none of the air which is supplied to these particular spaces should again come back uh, to the recirculation. Uh, the hospital that is medic room, sanitary room, laundry and pantry. These four spaces should have its own independent exhaust system, exhaust fans, one working, one standby. The reason is that because uh, as you know medic rooms, uh, the contamination should not be there, so it should be negative pressurization. Then sanitary rooms of course, the smell should not spread, the laundry of course, because you have a lot of drying and heating is getting generated. And again, the pantry again for the obvious reasons. So these are the spaces where you need to have an independent exhaust fan. And these are the spaces where the air, you should not take it back. Whatever air, air conditioning air you're supplying in this room, everything 100% you need to exhaust. Let's go to the next point. It is section 6.5, air balance. Uh, the system shall be positively balanced. It should be applicable on every deck. It means that the positive pressurization should be the part of the system. 
and it is independent of this laundry and center room and hospital where the negative pressure density you need to maintain. Then apart from these rooms you need to get the positive pressure addition in short. And the rooms uh, where these uh, when the, the in the rooms where there is a one tumbler or dryer the balance between the supply and exhaust should be considered okay. So every tumbler dryer as a manufacturer it has a different requirement for the airflow. So while designing your exhaust system you need to consider that what is the requirement uh, for the tumbler dryer for that particular uh, while designing the laundry system over here. There will be catalog over there which tumbler dryer you are selecting the, as per the catalog value you should select and match with the requirement of an exhaust fan selection of exhaust fans. Then hospitals, galleys, food preparation areas, other rooms such as smoking rooms etc shall be maintained at slightly lower pressure than the adjoining uh, spaces because as you know food preparation the smell comes out the galley also the kitchen the smoke comes out or the smoking room of course the people smoke there for obvious reasons so these are the spaces need not be positive pressurized it should be slightly lesser pressure than the adjacent so that smoke or whatever smell or whatever it is it should not travel from one area to another area rather it gets exhaust and the fresh air it gets replenished by the fresh air. So these are few areas it has to be slightly negative pressure than respect to the other areas. So I think it's clear. Let's go to the next one. Let's come to the very very important chapter that is occupancy over here. Uh, well, we'll be talking about the occupancy section 4.5 clearly defines what the occupancy we should take uh, per room or per area. Uh, in most of the majority of the drawings you may not find this occupancy so you need to assume some kind of an occupancy for these areas. So when the drawing comes to you of course these thumb rules you can use which is clearly stated in section 4.5 for the occupancy. For cabins maximum number of persons for which the cabin is designed that you can find from the number of beds which is kept on the or, or shown in the cabin so you can easily find out uh, the number of people. So suppose there is a bunk bed is there of course you can say two people are for the cabin. For saloons one person per two square meter of floor area. For mess or dining room one person for 1.5 square meter of area. Then for recreation room one person for five square meter of area. For captain or chief or engineer's day room it's four person. And other private day rooms you should consider three person. For hospital, medic room it is number of person plus two, number of beds plus two people. For gymnasium or the games room, four person. And for first aid room, two people. For offices, two people. For machinery control room, three people. So this is what you can use for this section 4.5 for the occupancy of the areas. So let's go. Hope the topic is clear because air conditioning when you design you need to decide the occupancy. So these are the areas, these are the rules, uh, section 4.5 you can use and you can apply that to the system. Now let's go to the next one. Here section 4.2 uh, if you see it talks about heat transmission and uh, gain loss and this is the formula which has been given over here and this is what uh, each one means. So let's see what it means over here and uh, when we uh, talk about this section, this section is 4.5 and uh, obviously this formula talks over here about the heat transmission or heat gain or heat loss. So what is that? Uh, let's go one by one. Is delta T is nothing but the difference in temperature in degree Kelvin that is different difference of air temperature between the air conditioned and non air conditioned internal spaces. The Kv here stands for the total heat transfer coefficient in watts per square meter per Kelvin for the surface area. Then let's go to Av. What is Av? Av is surface area in square meter excluding the side scuttle and rectangular windows and glazing plus 200 mm is what the section 5.2 talks about it. Then let's talk about the kg. It is not a kilogram but it's a total heat transfer coefficient in watts per square meter per Kelvin 
for the surface area AG. And let's what is AG again here? The surface area in square meter of side of the scuttle rectangular window that is glassing by 200 is what is AG. So if you put all these values over here, you will get the heat transmission or heat gain loss for the windows. So anyways, uh, let's go to the next one. So we'll understand in better way the other factors also. Now here we are going to look at the temperature difference between the adjoining surface. Section 5.2.2 Temperature difference between the adjoining thermal spaces for the different uh, for the difference of the temperature degree Kelvin between the air conditioned and non air conditioned internal spaces. It's mentioned in table 1 of section 5.2.2. What does it mean? Suppose you have one room air conditioned and other room non air conditioned. There's a partition between. So these are the guideline temperatures difference delta T which is given and which we have to use it while cal calculating the heat load calculation. So wherever the partition section or partition portion of the calculation is coming you need to use these values. So let's go one by one these values. What are these values? One is the type of bulkhead. Bulkhead as I explained earlier, bulkhead is nothing but a wall. It's a deck against tank provided with heating. Suppose your wall or bulkhead is against the tank with a heating, then for the summer you need to consider delta T of 43 and winter it you need to consider 17. Similarly for deck and bulkhead against the boiler room, is mentioned over here then deck and bulkhead against the engine room and against the non air conditioned gallery you need to consider 18 degrees celsius then again the bulkhead against the non heated tank cargo spaces and equivalent 13 degrees celsius then deck and bulkhead against the laundry is 11 deck and bulkhead against the various sanitary spaces is 6 degrees celsius and deck bulkhead against the central spaces of exposed, non exposed, and other areas. You need to consider respectively 2, 1, 6. And bulkhead against the galley storeroom, equivalent spaces, and equivalent trunks are considered 2 degrees Celsius. So, this is what uh, are the guidelines given. So, just you need to mark it up properly before going to interview. And the temperature difference between the adjoining spaces is explained in this. A particular section 5.2.2. So these values are also been commonly asked in the interview. So you need to take a note of it. And always remember that these are the provision for ISO 7547. So you need to understand the standard very well for going to interview. And you can tell to the interviewer that this is what the standard we have used. Let's go to the next slide. 